Hello and welcome back to Boring Dad Gaming, where today we're going to be playing some more of the Thaumaturge. Now we're on the trail of the killer known as the Fisherman, uh, hopefully getting a bit close to actually finding out who it is. And also when we do so, we'll be catching um, another wild salutor, hopefully. Let's, uh, let's carry on. A friend of Piotrusius, you can ask, just be discreet. Uh, yeah, okay, I'll swear about to him. What about Do you know anything about him? What a miserable chap. No one could ever cheer him up. It mm. must be really hard for his wife now. A friend of a friend saw him in a moonshine often. A local joint. I know where it is. Anything else? Thank you for being willing to talk to me. Goodbye. Give my best to Piotrus. Hey, what are you up to? Bothering the lady? Nothing comes for free. I don't want to keep escalating fights all the time. Uh, let's pay him. I know she doesn't have it. So here, I'll pay you for the conversation. Well, all right. Of course, I'll add something extra for the misunderstanding. Very good. Well, then, have a good night. And you, get back to work. We don't want to keep just beating people up, so... Can you try talking to the other ladies? Or is this the moon? Yeah, yeah, I'll talk to these guys. Will you stop sneaking up on us? <laughs> Do you know Tadeusz Pielecha? Poor guy. He was the one the fisherman got this time. You shouldn't say bad things about the dead. But? Pileha came to visit us, our Bodhi house, the day before he died. He wouldn't pay, so... And Yaja, the madam, had him thrown out. Thank you. I will talk to her. Yeah, that's a good lead. I've had it. Let's get out of here. I'm not going to stay here any longer, getting wet and tempting fate. Let's go. Yaja will get over it. Okay, yeah, let's go and ask, uh, let's go and ask Auntie about it. That's the ice house, oh, okay. Have you looked around? Any... Special requests? Um, Tell me about this place. Yeah. Ah, here we go. I've heard that Deus Pilecha came here the day before he died. You're not from around here, precious, are you? What are you snooping around for? I'm ashamed to say. Precious, there's nothing to be ashamed of. Tell Auntie what's on your mind. I have this weird fetish. Nothing excites me more than touching things that have been touched by dead people. <laughs> we make our customers' dreams come true, but this will cost you. Go on then. I don't. Did she have a motive to kill him? Yeah, let's let's intimidate her. this? You let me in the rooms, and I won't tell anyone you killed Pilecha for his debts. You've got a wild imagination, precious. Can you see me, an older woman, dragging an adult man's body? It doesn't matter. All that matters is what people believe once the rumor spreads. No one will visit the brothel where customers get killed. Gone. Upstairs with you. Just don't scare my girls. Ah. Or you'll kill me like you killed Pileha? All I need to do is have you thrown out, precious. Okay. I don't know which room it is. We'll go in all of them. Uh. Don't know what's going on in here, but oh, all right, all right. 
fine. Don't start screaming. It's probably this one anyway. Can you feel it? It's the smell of mystery. Topple table, did someone throw it? The boy hid under the table just for giggles. He waited for her to come, and when she came, he jumped out from under the table so suddenly that he caught the attention of Auntie Yadzia downstairs. The girl living here only laughed. A long and sincere laugh. A joyful memory. Hmm. That was probably Pietros, or whatever his name is. Two bottles used to contain cheap, locally brewed beer. The urchin brought her her favourite beer, but she had a customer. The hell with it. This time she'll make an exception and send the John off. She'd rather be drinking warm, flat beer than indulging the whims of Warsaw's degenerates. Ornate box. Trey Certain. Clara. Okay. Its appearance stands out from the monotony of its the threadbare room. A thought frolics around the box. Beatrix stole something for her again, but can you blame him? The boy is like a brother, unruly and careless, but he's the only reason she still smiles. But this trace is the fisherman's trace. Clara's trace. Oh, Clara's the fisherman, huh? That's a twist. Clara's carefree and sincere affection for Piotrek beams from the items. I was almost touched. The boy doesn't realise that his auntie is the fisherman. I have to find her. Piotrek may be in danger. Yikes. Okay, well we should probably go to the moonshine as well, right? I mean, follow all leads, I guess. Do we care that much about Pure Trek? <laughs> Probably not. Um, no, nah, he seemed he seemed all right. Little scamp. He did help us, uh, but I want to go to the uh, yeah the moonshine first. Clara is the fisherman, huh? Where is the moonshine bar? Ah. Interesting. I'll tell you why. I wasn't expecting that. I was not expecting that. You no, we got thrown out of here before. You are looking for trouble. I swear to God. Uh, ask if he's in a bad mood because of the weather. Is it the weather that has this effect on you? One more word, and we will take you out. Uh, let's lie about Piel Pielcha. I'm a friend of Tadeusz Pielcha. I know he liked spending time here. Bullshit! I knew Tadek, and I did not see you at the funeral toast. That's why I want to make it up. To Tadek, and to an easy death. All right. Come in. Just be good. All right, so we've never actually been in here, so there might be a few things here for us to find. What have we got? The bartender's cloth. A threadbare piece of fabric to wipe glasses. Cloth that's stiff from dirt is marked by beer stains and remnants of conversations. Words of joy. Words of pain. Wishes of good fortune. Secrets. Only companions make life in this despicable place at least somewhat bearable. Axe. Someone has driven it deep into the wooden wall. Though it appeared otherwise, the item is still carries a good memory. A simple game of axe throwing made long evening conversations more pleasant for the companions who have known each other since childhood. There are also words running down the handle, fresh and sad. Grief for the one who will never again join them for a drink. Over here. Cigarette button and ashtray. Ash blends with thoughts and powders. Sorry. Ash blends with thoughts and powders them grey. Don't make a mistake. Stay calm and watch the victim patiently. She can hear her brother's voice in her head as scolding as ever. As always, you dumb oaf, you're good for nothing. Hmm. Alright, let's talk to the barman. What can I get you? Uh, let's ask about Pielka. I know Pielka liked to come here. Wouldn't you rather have a drink? I, I don't feel like talking about Tadek. The bartender doesn't want to talk about Tadjus. I get it. I'm not from here, but maybe I can convince him somehow. 
Every patron here is a regular. No wonder they don't want to talk to me. I can sense a deep sadness in the bartender caused by the loss of one of his companions. I could take advantage of this and get him to confide in me about the fisherman's latest victim. Uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's do that. You miss him, so do the others. You've known him for ages, and now the mere mention of his name tears a hole in your heart. Help me, and I will do him justice. Yeah, it's a damn shame. If he went back to his wife that night rather than here, I guess he'd be still alive. That means he spent his last night here? Yeah, when he left, that was the last we ever saw him. It was pissing down that night, too. And a few days later, he was lying sprawled out on the river bank like a dead fish. Did you talk to him? Tadek did more drinking than talking. He only complained that Yaja had him removed from the brothel. He didn't avail himself of it, and he wouldn't pay for nothing. Other than that, no. He was a man of few words. I suppose we don't have many customers on rainy nights like that. Hmm? Can you remember who else was here? Just regulars. Same as today, some hookers come by at times. Today we've got one copper and one intrusive posh boy, which is okay. unusual. I'm not a copper. I mean you. Did Pieleha leave alone? Yenek, the steel worker, left with him, but he came back shortly after and passed out in the corner. Then a hooker went out, probably to work. Do you remember which one? Clara. She's the caring one. She jumps around with that little shit Eusta. <laughs> I'm familiar with his work. Good riddance. <laughs> okay, we're basically done here. Bielka left the moonshine, vowing not to return to his wife. In the morning, he was already lying on the riverbank, dead. Tadjus Pielka died after leaving his favourite bar. His horses in the sky may relate to the last thing he heard before his death. Horse-drawn coaches and carriages going across the bridge that towers over the district. So, the fisherman's torture chamber may be located under its massive arches, in one of the barracks there. Alright, well I think we're done in here. I guess we've got to find the hideout now. Should we talk to, talk to the cop first, maybe? Anything new? Uh, yeah. I know the fisherman's identity. It's Clara, one of Antiaja's prostitutes. What? So what are we waiting for? Let's get her! I don't know where he is. I'll get back to you. He? So what am I supposed to... Fine, I wait. Alright, so where... Where are we going? It may not be in this district even, but I suspect it is. Uh, okay, one of these things then, probably. But what we got? What we got? Cigarette butts in a can. In front of one of the warehouses, the cigarette butts were filled with a hateful thoughts, exhaled with each drag. He just has to finish up the piecha now that he's on the table, toss him out on the riverbank and go back to his place. What's going on? Has she got a hidden brother, or is she is she like a is she you know got a multiple personality disorder or something? The murderess bears a trauma from her past. Pain and anger impelled her to take revenge on men for the hurt caused by her brother, who reeked of fish. They stripped her of moral inhibitions and her disappointment with Warsaw, and her life gave her a twisted excuse for killing. Well, it says to enter, so I guess we do. Oh. Auntie Clara, what did you do to the boy? Piotrusz's older friend. I expected this to be only a matter of time. I warned you he would get hurt. What did she do? Why is he lying still? What did you do to him? For now. He's only sleeping. 
The little angel. Like little angel. Like the others. Oh, I think this might be we might call for a pride answer here. Move away from him. None of this is his fault. True. He was bright. He connected the dots quickly and found this place. And this is why you want to kill him now? I don't want to, but I must. Because of you, you're to blame for the boy wanting to play detective. And now his blood will be on your hands. Uh, we could try appealing to a affection for the boy. Piotrek is a bright lad, and he's got his entire life ahead of him. He trusted you. Yes. He was the only one who never looked down on me. It's all your fault. Everything would have worked out if it wasn't for this pesky kid. Why are you even doing this? Why wouldn't I be doing this? Why wouldn't I slaughter those stinking sods? My only regret is that I didn't start sooner. Okay, what have we got? Remind her about the brother. Mention her dislike of Warsaw. Bring up the food. I think we'll do all of that because um, that uh, white responses don't kind of move on the conversation. And then I think we'll we'll use heart four. So let's let's work down. Your brother. What is it that he's done to you? Brother. Daft prick is more like it. He raised me after our parents died. Raised me with a heavy hand. I hated him. But I also only had him. Did she kill him too? You killed him too? I dreamed about it every day. Until he finally died on his own in a stupid accident. Blithering idiot. He managed to take even that from me. The satisfaction of his death. It's not even about my brother this time. It's about this cursed city. Okay, uh, let's bring up Warsaw then. You're not from here. Warsaw wasn't kind to you, was it? Kind? Warsaw devoured me. It chewed me up and shut me out. I came here with the hope of leaving everything behind me. I was a good girl. I wanted to find a job and start a new life. I didn't have any prospects. Whoring turned out to be the only option. It wasn't until I finally got the courage to kill my first river stinking customer that I felt that there must be some sense in all this. No, not sense. There is no sense. Pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I hate Warso myself. Sometimes I would like to sink this city, but making peace with it is simpler. That's it. I'm done talking. Wait. You can't stand the smell of fish. Why? Because the past stinks of fish. He only needed to swing his arm to make me nauseous. The stench of fish lingered long on my skin. Now I'm relieving the world of it. Okay, well, we're going to do the heart answer, obviously. You won't hurt him the same way you were hurt because you don't hate him. I have seen and felt how carefree you become in his presence, as if he gave you back moments of childhood that you never had. I'm sorry, Piotrusz. Now we'll leave together. No, magician. Piotrusz has all the time in the universe. I don't. Stop! Damn. What the fuck is this place? She's the murderer? Clara? Is she? Unfortunately. Fucking hell. I knew I would regret it. Don't tell me the kid is dead too. Well, he's alive. 
Then wake him up and let's get out of here. It really stinks of fish. <laughs> Everything okay? You all right? All right. Yeah. I'm all right. You're lucky the kid's in one piece. How could you be so irresponsible and act alone? There was no time to think. I had to act fast. And I think you followed your pride, Mr. Great Talmathurd. Would you ever think she's the murderess? No. This is where my intuition failed. I also didn't anticipate that she'd take her life like this. What will happen to Cayetana now? The perpetrator is deceased, so now I have to tie all the murders to her corpse. It'll take a while without a testimony. Seeing as you've bungled everything here, I'm tempted to hold your painter until he croaks. Just tell me when you release him. I'll call you. I'm sorry for dragging you into this, lad. Nah. Forget about it. The risk comes with the job. Good but job. I guess you'll have to conduct your next investigation without me. We'll manage somehow. How did you end up on this table? I found this dive, and as I was going to get you, Auntie Clara showed up. Then, I don't remember. Hmm, I understand. I'm sorry I didn't notify you before. Apologizing won't change the fact that the murderer, the murderer is dead. Okay, maybe I. I'll be waiting for your call. Maybe I could have come and got him when we discovered it there. I don't know, but then maybe the boy would have died. Because that would have meant delaying, wouldn't it? We did good. Maybe that was the choice: save the boy or save the murderer. I'll show you the police station. I'm going to assume that's the case. Um. Okay, cool. Now we didn't get the um. Salutor is the thing. That was kind of weird. How do we get Morana? Maybe that. Maybe that. Maybe if you follow the story, that will that will come up again. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Well, I'm going to do um some more of these little side quests now. I think. Uh. I think a couple of the viewpoints on our map. I want to. That's okay. That's on a different map. Um, do this one. It's probably on a different map, but that's fine. We'll go to where it is. Uh, cemetery. All right. Okay. I think the other one might be there as well. I have to trim down the quest log a little bit. What have we got? Notes from a sermon. The predatory culture of the West is already digging its claws into the beating heart of our nation, the church. How many of us are choosing to visit the tabernacles of entertainment instead of worship? Even once serious institutions are turning into a circus. I am thinking, for example, of the event that will take place on Thursday in a building that has always hosted only respected people of science. And now at a time that exactly coincides with the rosary service in our church. They're planning to put on a moving picture show. A hollow clown act designed to divert our thoughts from work, family and religion. Hello, sweet secret. Live photography demonstration. On Thursday evening, Kazimir Prozniski and his playograph will appear at the headquarters of the Technicians Association at 59 Povakovska Street. This will be an opportunity to see a demonstration of live photography. Where is that? I feel that's taking me back to the carriage that's so probably on a different note at a different time. Okay, I th see if there's more. The other one that needs clues still found might be on this map. It is not. Uh, okay. I want to I kind of follow this, I think, rather than... Okay. So this one, we can get a couple of the viewpoints as well. There's one near our house and there's one near the church. So we can take a bit off.
At least the loading screens are nice and quick. Always helps. Alright, so we want to grab this. Now that one's done. Uh, follow these, but I think... Oh, I can't even see what's going on. I think the church is up here. Is this the church? That's the church. Okay, so what we got up here then? I am actually going to do this. Uh, so there's another thing ticked off. What was this? No, not there. Where are we going? In here? Bigot's Diary. Warsaw is sinking further and further into the depths of moral decay with every passing year. Streets that were once inhabited by modest and pious families are now turning into a hotbed of the worst individuals. For example, my neighbour, dear Mrs. S, told me about a woman who rents an apartment in a tenement house on 7 Edivanska Street. She is an operatist who is visited by many rich men. She has an abundance of gowns and lavish furnishings in her apartment. Recently, one of her many patrons took her on a foreign trip to Japan. Her ilk ought to be ashamed to show their faces in public. I think there's, well, tell you what, have I, I don't know if I've been down this street. Maybe I should see if there's anything else down here. Doesn't look like it. I think that, was that where I fought the uh, coffin maker? Doop -doop -doop. Oh, down here. What do we got? Photograph. Showing a woman in lingerie tying her corset. Caption, Lady Hello. Dragonfly. Sweet secret. At 7 Adavanska Street resides Lady Dragonfly, a luxury courtesan who's fan of, fond of travelling. She offers her clients an extraordinary experience during a ceremony that coddles the senses. Okay. How do we attend such a ceremony? Probably not first thing in the morning like it currently is, but I expect it's going to take us to a place to wait, which I might do. Oh, is this it? Oh. True bliss! It wasn't what I'd expected, but I must admit the Japanese tea is without equal. Ah. A Japanese tea ceremony. How sweet. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. Um, we've got a drawing lesson. We've got a photography show. Uh, and then near the station, which actually is on this map, I believe. No. No, it's not. Uh, so in that case... Um, See what this is. Is that gonna take me to a bench or is it actually gonna be here? No, it's not here. It's gonna take me to the bench, isn't it? Okay. Um what well. Let's wait until uh, afternoon. So let's. It could be time. evening. It'll tell us pretty soon. Oh, okay. So we're at the right time. Probably taking us to a carriage or a tram. Yeah, it looks like it. Okay, so where do we go? Cemetery, huh? Okay. It's just there. 
I wish I had a better, <laughs> I wish I had a better idea of which streets are on which map. Because uh, it tells you the street, but then the map doesn't tell you the streets. I mean, unless I've missed a more obvious way of working out, you know, kind of where the streets are. Unless you're supposed to just remember. Okay, what we got here? I'd say that's it. Moving pictures. I wonder if they'll ever completely replace traditional photographs. I don't. I, th I th probably not. I would think. I, I think that's probably a dead end technology. Right, cool. Okay, there's night now. Oh, there's a little carriage moving about. Hello. So, I think I'm going to do. We're getting through these now. Let's do the lesson in drawing. Let's see what that is. That's probably on a different map. It might not be, though. Probably not the right time of day, though. Although I have tried other times a day for this one, and it does seem to tell me to rest like it's doing now. Okay. Let's wait. Um. Let's wait until. So noon, and then we'll do afternoon. Sometime. Is it saying bench again? Or is it here? Seems to be implying the bench again, doesn't it? Okay, well let's let's try afternoon then. Find your legs, kitten. Let's what? So let now. Okay, now we can go somewhere else. And this one's in southern Srodmichia, which is good because that's where the chatterbox is near the station as well. So we can do that one too. And we've cleared out the uh, the journal a little bit. Where are we going? Well, it is the dog. My eldest daughter's just arrived and is extremely excited about it. Um. <laughs> Let's calm down. Don't say that we're going to wait on the bench. Doesn't look like it. Okay. In around here. Oh, it's here, is it? Okay. The Nevsky Orthodox Church, a growth upon the town's tissue. Unfortunately, it's hard to look at it objectively as a piece of architecture. A little still life class. How oh, nice. Yeah. Ooh. It's night. Oh, it's night. Of course, it's night time now. Who's this dude? Tobias Fagin. Fagin? Nobody's home? They are, they are. They just won't answer the door. Tobias Fagin, the Warsaw Courier. Maybe they want to mourn their son in peace rather than talk to the press. What are you looking oh, for? Oh, this is the other side quest, okay. But I think my methods are more effective. Then maybe I will leave, and later you can share something. Deal? Yeah, okay. All right, if I learn anything interesting, I'll share it with you. Great, it's a deal. I will hold you to your word. I may break it. You chased him away? Glory be! Thank you. Please, come in before he gets back. Let me at least offer you some tea. Oh, I, I didn't intend to, <laughs> to, to pursue this side quest failed. just yet. Hang on, let me just look at my, my thing, because... Um, so we're doing this one now, aren't we? Um, all I was going to do is just check that that was the only one left, and it is. So I think we'll just we'll mark this as active. Okay, well let's uh, let's do this one then, I suppose. Let's have a little snoop around before we chat to the guy. Coat with a fur collar. Oh, we got another level up. Uh, black wool hugs the perfectly finished line of the collar. Expensive buttons still radiate with a faint glow of Parisian lights. The beauty of the intention is covered with dust. This gift wasn't chosen to make someone happy. The owner simply got bored with the out-of-fashion piece of rubbish. Oh dear. Broken plate. Every shard of the plate tossed with fury radiates with a sense of injustice. A lifetime of hard work, taking care of his family. He didn't deserve such immense suffering. Sharp shards feel stuck in the throat and throttle with each heartbeat. 
This photo shows a young woman posing in a photography studio. A look frozen in time, love portrayed with a rich man's money, a piece of delight cropped to fit the frame. The paper reflects the light and thoughts of the beloved wrapped around the photograph, like the halo around the head of a saint. Crumpled bill, a high medical bill, bell, uh, blah, blah, a high medical bill even, and an annotation of debt. Amounts keep appearing on more and more pieces of paper, written as dead strings of digits. The paper has been crumpled up by weary hands, with a corner warped by wet tears. Helplessness and despair pass through the heart in waves, each one more dizzying. Okay, well, let's continue our snooping. Ah, I think it's... Oh, I don't know who this is. I mean, another son, I suppose, but it looks like his wife might be quite ill. Ties in with the medical bills. Come in. Would you like some tea? My name's Krajewski. Zygmunt. Viktor Shulski. Thank you. Maybe later. I have a question. Is it about Ludwig? Since you brushed that news hand off. All right. Ask away. Uh, let's ask about the journalist first. Do you get invaded by the press often? Not a day passes without someone knocking at the door, sniffing around, reopening wounds, looking for a scoop. But each one of them also promises money. We're not wealthy, and after Ludwig's death, we have even less. You could use some money now. Sure, but I really don't know what I could tell the news hounds. That's enough. Ask about the two guys. Did Ludwig live here with you? Not much recently. Pietja kept inviting him to all kinds of places. Parties, dances, horse racing. Did it happen often? What? Pietja's invitations? Yes. I would tell him Ruskis were not appropriate company for him. Perhaps Ludwig was impressed with it all. You bet. But if you ask me, Pietja was using Ludwig so that others would admire him for spending time with a poor man. So, mm. there you have it. According to Zygmunt, Pietja used his relationship with the poor Ludwig to build up his image. A profitable relationship. Ludwig and Pietja's relationship was quite complicated. Pietja's goal was to show others that he was magnanimous because he was friends with a poor boy. Ludwig, on the other hand, wanted to give his fiancée a good life, thanks to his friend's support. He was also impressed by the company of the young Voronin. That's enough. Can I ask you about Ludwig's belongings? You've looked around by now? Let's start with the coat. An elegant man's coat. Is it Ludwig's? I don't have the heart to sell it. Ludwig liked it so much. Pietja gave it to him. Or what about the photo? I found a photo of a young woman. Who is she? This is Hannah, Ludwig's sweetheart. They had been seeing each other for a while. She was here not long ago. After... what happened. I've seen the doctor's bill. I think this is trash. Okay. Goodbye. So, I uh, will follow his thoughts then. Oh, it wants me to go outside. Okay. Fair enough, we'll do that. Could be... Ah, we're going to ignore him for now. Ah. <laughs> Mr. W.S., what's the hurry? You didn't introduce yourself, but I have my own ways of getting to the truth. W.S. Viktor Shulski. Are you one of those Shulskis? Stanislav's son? No. What do you want? Our little deal, remember? Let's just send him on his way. Oh, mind you, he might badmouth me in the press. Um... Get rid of him. My mind is clouded today. Uh, my memory is failing. Are all Tempermancers like that? In that case, until next time. 
Mr. W. I think we'll see more of him. Um, so, I was just thinking, I wonder if this could be like a love triangle situation with Petra and Hannah and Ludwig, or whether Ludwig and Hannah had an argument and he slipped off the balcony. I don't know. Do you, oh, hello. What are we, oh. oh, wait a minute. Yeah, that's why there's a blood stain on the pavement. This is where the guy fell off, isn't it? Ah, and a floral tribute. Okay. Oh, I'm glad we've cleared that up anyway. Well, I was wondering about that. A candle is burning slowly on an improvised altar dedicated to Ludwig. Was it Ludwig? Vig or Ludwig? The flame hisses treacherously. Grief over the death of a child bites and slowly sucks the blood, especially at night when Maria's raspy breathing can also be heard. Zygmunt knows that he will place a second candle on the altar soon, and then his heart will shatter into a million pieces. Oh, his wife's dying then by the sound of it. The Krajewskis are in a difficult situation. Ludwig has died, which has worsened the already seriously ill Maria's condition. The medical costs are too high for Zygmunt to bear. Okay, so I guess we go and talk to Petra. There's some more stuff here, though, I think, by the look of it. Hello, sweet Hunting secret. crop. The mahogany handle. A mahogany-coloured handle, autumn leaves, a fox's bushy tail among the trees. The memory of autumn hunts is covered by dark clouds. Once, every expedition was exciting, but now they have become routine. Yet he must keep doing them to retain his place in the Count's circle of friends. Who does this belong to? Trapped. The inability to save oneself from the dullness of everyday life, from the monotony and boredom. Why is human joy so short-lived? Quilting is a laborious technique that both reinforces and embellishes the fabric. The chequered pattern is a timeless classic, and the gingery colour brightens up the whole thing. Maybe this will help fight off the melancholy. Hmm. Okay. Don't know what that pertains to. Here, but I think we're done. Have I, have I done the Imperial Hotel Overlook? I'm, I might have done. Let's just do it again, just in case. Can't remember. Probably did. Yeah, no XP, so I guess I did. Right, let's go chat to... Hang on. Uh, no, never mind. I just I remember there was a there was a there was a door on the map that was for uh, apartment two three seven earlier. Oh, hello, Mr. Shulsky. Hello. Shall I inform the authorities and hospitals, or shall I wait? <laughs> Your last visit has become somewhat of a legend. This time it'll be quiet. I promise. I'm here to see Pyotr Voronin. Is Master Voronin moving out by any chance? Never mind. Where can I find our pest? Room 213, second floor. You've been there already. I'm not going to do the Svetlana thing yet, though. I'm going to leave that for a bit. The concierge doesn't really like Petra. The sound of it was this. Complaint. Dear sirs, I would like to inform you that my wife and I are forced to shorten our stay at the hotel if the situation does not change. Peaceful rest has recently become impossible here due to the noise coming almost all night, every day, from the flat on the first floor, where, as we have heard, Mr. Voronin lives. In addition, there are people of dubious provenance in the vicinity of this flat in the evenings. The only solution for people who care about peace and their reputation is to get as far away as possible from such excesses, which we will do if you do not do something about it. Yours sincerely, Alexander Ivanov. Okay. Okay, Petcher's house. What's that thing on your head? Do something about it, please. There is... Wow, there's loads of people just milling about in this place. There's a man asleep in the... There's someone asleep in the bath. Hello. Alright. Someone asleep on the bed? Not Petcher. Oh, these guys are quite... Old as well. There's something balding. What's going on? So, same thing tonight, gentlemen. You bet. I'll get some cognac. It will help react to the atmosphere. Oh, balcony. Uh, 
We probably want to talk to Petra sure. first, and then Same maybe we'll want to go and uh, look around. You bet. I'll get some cognac. What are you doing, Petra? Who's this guy? It's just my cousin. Hello, Victor. Meet Thomas and Franz. Did you miss me? Uh, yeah, we just wanted to see your apartment. I wanted to see how you've settled in. Take a look around. It gets quite interesting here during my modest parties. Want some champagne? About these parties, I think someone got lost on the balcony recently. It was Papa who sent you, wasn't it? I told him to stay out of this. Tomas, Franz, show my cousin the door. Fight time. What have we got? Okay, so he's another one who's just going to do something to us. Unknown. But we can... Okay, reduce damage by 80%, but up here... Bukovac. Probably get rid of the damage guy first. I think we'll just start the fight. Okay, so this is up here, isn't it? Um, what should we do? Well, we should start with up here first, and probably a fairly quick one if we can. So we'll do the focus attack. I could do that. Or should we go with the suffering? I do suffering. We got we got quite a lot of stuff that combos with that. I might want to put Suffering on this guy as well, so I might attack immediately with Bukovac on this guy. Um. Yeah, cast Suffering, yeah, okay. What's this thing? I don't know. Okay, so we've got two guys in suffering. Um, their traits are disabled, so maybe we could... Who does quite well with that? What could we do here? Uh, interrupt. Who's, who could do well with suffering? I mean, it's probably this guy, isn't it? Uh, we attack this one. So he should do, he's, he's going to do 16 damage. So let's do that. And then he'll have 8 left. And I can... But he'll, oh. 4 damage times 2. So he's actually, well it could be 3, it's 3 to 4. No, or 4 damage for 2 turns maybe? Is that kind of what it's saying? Um, 4, I don't really get it. But I think it's 8. He could die. I think we'll just do a quick attack just to really make sure that he goes down because I think it was saying 3 to 4 damage. He didn't go down. Oh, but he's still got the suffering to come, so. There he goes. So this guy, 22 health. Uh, he's got suffering on uh, Bukovac. The lower the enemy's health points, the faster the skills. So he is almost got a kill. So we'll. Uh, We'll do this as well. And between the two, he should be dead. Oh, he just bled out. <laughs> as you can see, I can be stubborn. Congratulations, Franz and Thomas are tough customers. Well, speak up. I don't have all day. Okay, we'll just ask about what his version. That night, from your point of view. Thanks, cousin. It's hard for me to talk about it. He was my friend. We were having fun. Whiskey, cigars, and other amusements. Ludwig got drunk and went out on the balcony. He yelled something about wanting to get higher, even higher. And then there was a scream and a shriek from down below. I stepped out onto the balcony and Ludwig... He was down there. Dead. Uh... How would you, what would How you say about this? It? Your friend is dead. He was someone's son. Yes, the Krajewskis. I know they're poor, but I can help them with that. They say the press is interested in them. I've heard. I'm not worried about myself, but it may damage Papa's reputation. 
and it could take a toll on the Krajewskis too. I want to protect them. Money is no object. I went to see the Krajewskis. How are they? They remember how close you two were, how much Ludwig cherished your friendship and your gifts. Really? The Krajewskis remember me? All right, that'll do for now, I guess. Got the phone? Hello? Who is it? Did she introduce herself? No, do not let her in under any circumstances. Oh, hello. Someone's got a floor. You have an unwelcome guest? Mind Hannah. your own business. But it's Hannah. I'm getting love triangle sense from this. Outline of a floor. During my conversation with Petcher, while delicately coaxing information from him about his relationship with Ludwig, I saw a flicker of Petcher's floor. If I want to bring it out, I should look for additional arguments. Okay. Interesting. I want to have a little look around the house, though, and I want to go on the balcony, too. There might be something out there that we can sort of confront him with. Yeah, there is. Men's shoes arranged in a neat row in front of the balustrade. The souls emanate with shaky excitement. One step on the balustrade, one step towards a new life. The man was filled with joy. He would be able to provide a better life for his beloved and his family. He had just signed a document, so everything was on paper. Life insurance? That was Ludwig. Hmm, interesting. He may have been high on something, I don't know. Hairpin. Hairpin lost on the hotel balcony. She had wanted to fix her hair. Her fingers suddenly became stiff and her body was seized by a spasm. The metal pin was electrified with terror. The second that destroyed two lives imprinted itself on the small ornament, turning it into an artifact of pain. So maybe he was out here with Hannah and then he just suddenly jumped? Hmm... Okay. What happens if we talk... Okay, well, I can't talk with Petra again just yet, but let's have another look around his apartment now we've spoken to him. I think there is something. Lock, stock, and barrel matchbox. Scared person. The package is drenched. It's hardly possible to make out the name of the bar. The box still bears a trace of warmth. A break at work. A small flame appears. Uh, sorry, a small flame lights a cigarette. A small flicker of hope glows in the soul. The waitress drifts off into a dream world. She sees herself in a white dress and veil, with her head held high, valued at last. So, at the time of Ludwig's death, someone else was on the balcony. A witness, a woman, most likely a waitress from the Lock, Stock and Barrel bar. Hmm. Interesting. Oop, oop, oop. Okay, well, let's go to the uh, lobby then, because it sounds like there might be a bit of a disturbance down there. My guess is Hannah's turned up to confront Petcher about something, and he is not keen to see her. Okay, that's got to be her, right? I insist you let me Anna. in. Hannah! I have already told you, madam, Master Voronin is not here. Perhaps I could help you somehow. Let's talk. Please do. Best of luck. I'd do anything for a short break from those annoying guests of his. I will get to that bastard no matter what. Don't even try to throw me out. This is probably the waitress? Quite the opposite. I can help you. Maybe? But first, I'd like to know why he didn't want to let you in. Because he's afraid to look ah. me in <laughs> And I'm carrying his child. I see. Peter should hear the joyful news. <laughs> Please give me a moment. Petra refuses to talk to Anna, even though he's the father of her child. This is certainly a fitting clue as to how to make my cousin's floor shine in its full glory. Uh, yes, but I also want to have a quick look at this. This is suggesting that I go outside. Okay. Wiped writing on the wall. Traces of paint are barely discernible. Someone tried to wipe them off. 
Streaks of paint are like stains cast on the mind, clouding judgement. The concierge looked at the inscription and imagined himself grabbing Petra by the collar and throwing him off the balcony. Red paint splashes onto the driveway, but it's nothing. He'll clean it up after all. Hmm. Why is this leading me away? I wonder if I wonder if I should go to the lock stock. Is that on this map? It is. Okay. Uh, maybe we should do that. Who's this? Cop. All right. Do you have a problem, gentlemen? We'll see about that. Do you have any documents? What I got a book. Of, the kind that says you can strut around here. This is a fancy neighborhood. Give me your papers. Hmm. Um. I'm going to write them a bill of exchange. Oh, documents. How about these? They look fine to me. Well, have a good day, sir. They were just shaking me down, I think. All right, let's do the lock stock. Who's this? Beer connoisseur. All right. Beer. It's got flavor, vitamins, and minerals. I don't drink for health. Vodka. I can see you're having a serious debate, gentlemen. <laughs> Better tell us what you prefer. I only drink finest champagne. Gentlemen, the best alcohol to celebrate is champagne. Look at Mr. Larida here. Vodka and beer aren't good enough for him. Let's chase these. Get him, lads. <laughs> I knew it. Let's get him. <laughs> I mean, why not have a fight about which drink is best? I mean, sure. What's this? Okay, so, Velez, that's okay. He hasn't got anything going on. Uh, Upir. Reducing damage, reducing damage, Book of Hatch. Okay, well, let's get rid of this guy. I think that's probably going to be the easiest to do. So we want, uh, we want Velez in on this. Uh, just any attack, really. Um, I guess. I guess a quick one. Yeah, I guess I'll do focus. And who can we get rid of focus with? I think Upir's got a fairly quick focus. There's Lelek. Yeah, okay. Nice and quick. Um, I might... Quick suffering on this guy. Right, now this guy's vulnerable, so that's not a kill, uh, but we'll do it anyway. And we probably... Who's got a good finishing move? Our states and all enemies. Yeah. Let's put everyone in suffering. And then we can kind of combo that with Bukovac, one of Bukovac's other skills. <laughs> Dead. Ow. Oh, they're really hammering our focus. Ow. Literally. Okay, well. Um, so, Bukovac. It's gonna deal. It's gonna. That's a kill. That's a kill, so we'll do that. Now, these guys. Ah, I suppose we could go with the suffering again. Because uh, they're, they're resisting damage. Uh, I guess we'll put another one on on him, maybe. The guy's clapping in the background. There he goes. Blah. <laughs> 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 
Okay, so he's only got four left. I think he's dead. Um, we we'll just do more suffering. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure he's dead. He's going to hit me first, though, so maybe I could recover some focus back before that happens. goes and he's basically dead so we'll just smack him in the face now he's actually dead I don't think they're dead we knock them out don't we we don't, we don't kill anyone just a good natured scrap in the street where are we going ah we are going towards the lock stock I think Makes sense okay but I think on that note, we'll leave it there for now. When we come back, we'll go into the lock stock. We'll find out what's going on with the waitress there. Um, I want to cut. I don't know about forcing the, the Krajewskis to accept Petcher's money. We'll leave that for now. I want to I want to investigate Petcher's floor uh, before then, I think. But yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed this one. If you have, if you could hit the thumbs up button, that's always very much appreciated, as is leaving me a comment and letting me know what you thought about the video, about this uh, game, the series, anything you like, really. And, um, you know, if you're watching this and haven't already subscribed to the channel, it would be amazing if you could do that. So thanks very much, and I hope to see you next time. Bye for now.